The Shadow of a Memory, Chapter 3. The Shadow of a Memory. I'm worried about what that means. Heart clench, heart clench. The dining hall is lively this morning. Filled with the voices of my chattering family, the four of them have been discussing some kind of upcoming ball, but my thoughts are elsewhere. No matter how hard I try, I cannot dispel the image of the rain running down Fritz's cheeks like tears. Fritz was smiling by the end of the night, but his sadness still seems to linger. I have to find some way to help him overcome it. But how? Lisette? Lucette. <laughs> Rod's voice is loud enough to break me from my reverie. I look up at him, startled. He just rolls his eyes before going back to his breakfast. Thank you, boo. The trick, Em, is to say her name loudly enough to startle her out of her thoughts. Oh! I'll keep that in mind! I grumble as the two of them exchange a smile. You needed me for something? We wanted your opinion on a theme for the upcoming ball, dear. My opinion? I do not care what sort of theme it has. Emmeline and Ophelia are better at planning these elaborate affairs anyway. You at least need to give us your opinion on the finalized concepts. I wait for Ophelia to list the ideas. In the end, I consent to a mixed floral theme. Ophelia thinks it would be nice for the summer. It hardly matters. The noblemen and ladies will come regardless because it is a royal ball. Later, when the conversation dwindles and the food is finished, the servants begin to clear breakfast from, from the table. Father reminds me of a council meeting later in the day before excusing himself. Ophelia is quick to follow, saying she needs to work on plans for the ball. I am left with Emmeline and Rod. So, how is Sir Fitzgerald doing? Fine. I think. You think? He has been extraordinarily busy. I had thought his resigning would mean no more obligations, but he still has many loose ends to tie up. I hope he can have breakfast with us again soon. Hmm. Is something wrong? I was just thinking about the last time he had breakfast with us. Uh, oh. For a few moments, the dining hall is quiet, save for the clatter of plates and utensils as the kitchen staff remove them from the table. I was wondering about this, because I'm like, oh, does Fritz not dine with the family like the other boys have done in the past? So he has come. What went wrong? Last time Fritz was here, he managed to accidentally impale the table with a fork and knock over a platter of fruit. He also nearly hit a man in the head with a spoon. How... Hmm. I know he's clumsy, but... <laughs> Fritz. Well, it's a fun memory to look back on. How did he manage to throw the spoon backwards at one of the servants? It... slipped out of his hand. It is remarkable how Fritz can be so composed one moment and shockingly clumsy the next. I believe he said he was extremely tired that day, but... <laughs> Sir Fitzgerald is a wonder. He is. Ever since that incident, he has purposefully avoided invitations to breakfast. <clears throat> well, I have some morning errands to run with Fritz, so I will excuse myself early. Emmeline and Rod both look at me quizzically. Errands? Personal errands. Tell Father I will be back in time for the council meeting. The three of us exchange farewells before I head out. Personal errands? With Fitzgerald? Ah, errands. Wink. Gotcha. And here we are. After leaving the dining hall, I went to the front gates to meet Fritz, who was there just after ten, as promised. He walked me to the edge of the forest, along with three of his most trusted guards. 
As soon as we reached the clearing, he told the guards to scatter. Today is the day he teaches me how to defend myself. Is there a reason you brought other knights with us? To watch the perimeter, just in case. He is cautious as always. He takes my hand and leads me over to a tree stump. Milady. He bows when I sit down. I smile at him. Lord Fitzgerald. I laugh when he blushes. <laughs> so far, I do not think anyone other than the knights he used to train have used this new title. He coughs to clear his throat. <coughs> I'll give you the rules of our exercise before we start. Rules? Yes. The goal is to keep me from touching you by any means necessary. The only thing you aren't allowed to use is the dagger. Okay. He glances at the small pocket of my dress. I never told him I had it in my pocket. How did he know? We'll have you use the dagger later, when you become more accustomed to its weight. But for now. He takes a step forward. Between one step and the next, a wolfish grin appears on his face. Please stop doing this to me, game! You are going to hide and run and do whatever it takes to get away from me. Because in this exercise, I'll be hunting you. Hunting. The look on his face reminds me of the smirk he was wearing in the forest yesterday. It is a smile that will always remind me of Varg. Alright, at least your face matches how I feel. <laughs> Thanks, Lucette. I appreciate the solidarity. Lucette. He looks at me, concerned. Too much. No. I was just thinking about something. I stand from the tree stump with renewed resolve. I am ready. Good. This is just a test run, so no pressure. Just do what you think is instinctively best, and we'll work on your lesson from there. I have not done something like this since I was a child. Only back then, the running was nothing more than a game. I clench my hands into fists and nod. Remember to stay in the forest, Lucette. I take a few steps back, waiting for him to signal. Much to my surprise, Fritz only closes his eyes and crosses his arms. I'll give you a ten seconds head start. Okay, if they're playing hide and seek, gotcha. He immediately begins counting down after that, and without another thought, I turn on my heels and run. I run as fast as my legs can take me, doing my best to weave through the forest bramble as quietly as I can. Eventually, the sound of counting stops. I hear Fritz take one step, then another, and then he is running into the forest after me. My heartbeat picks up as he draws nearer. Even though it is Fritz, I cannot stop myself from shaking. What should I do? Okay. Um, facing him head on is out of the question, because we're supposed to... The point of the exercise is for him not to touch us in any way. If we keep running, he'll probably hear us, and he's a lot faster than we are. <laughs> There's a chance if I hide, he may not see me. So I'm gonna try hiding. <laughs> Fritz is a fast runner, and I have no doubt he will catch me if I continue at this pace. It might be more effective to hide from him. I quickly scatter the leaves in front of me and sweep them in the opposite direction with my foot, hoping that Fritz will assume I have gone the other way. Clever. Then I put my back to the nearest tree and hold my breath as he approaches. I do my best to still my breathing, even going so far as to bite down on my lip as I press myself into the tree and try to make myself small. It is only when Fritz disappears around the bend that I lose a breath, incredulous. It worked? No sooner had the thought occurred to me than that I suddenly hear a voice at my shoulder. Dread. Boo. Ugh, the Varg feels. <laughs> he always used to 
say poo. Uh, I jump away from the tree with an undignified yelp, then hurry to reach for something I can use as a weapon. I find a loose branch on one of the trees, snap it off, and hold it before me. Fritz immediately goes on the offensive, reaching out to grab me as I shrink away. I hold the branch up in front of me like a shield. Hmm, clever. He stalks just out of range, his footsteps quiet as he circles me. It almost feels like... an animal toying with its prey. I am so busy watching Fritz's movement that I do not notice when he suddenly pivots in my direction. I take a step back, but come back to back with a tree trunk. I hold up my branch, but it is useless. Fritz grabs the branch with one hand and leans forward to plant a kiss on my forehead. Caught you. <sighs> I sigh as I let the tree branch fall from my hand. What you did was wise. Using a branch as a shield? <laughs> well, that, yes. But I'm referring to the hiding. There is a reason I wanted to start off like this before moving on to defense. Evasion is important. It's best to avoid a fight if you can. Okay, that is a good lesson to learn. You're pretty good at hiding. But you caught me. Because I heard you sigh. <laughs> Still, though, your instincts are good, Lucette. Anyway, now that the exercise is over, let's move on to defense, shall we? For the next hour, Fritz teaches me defensive stances. He shows me how to react in certain situations, including ones that are similar to my capture in the alleyway. Come the end of the, of the hour, he has taught me how to break out of someone's grip. The first method involves pulling back on someone's thumb, and the second involves pulling down on their forearm. I am about to ask him to demonstrate one of the holds when I stop, realizing the time. Fritz is one step ahead of me. You have to be getting back now, don't you? Some meeting with the counselors. I nod my head with a sigh. <sighs> my attendance at these meetings is necessary. Not only because I will be queen someday, but because father insists I know the various counselors personally. I'll lead you back, then. He offers his arm, and I allow him to lead me back to the palace. Thank you. For everything. The council meeting goes on longer than expected. By the time the counselors are finally excused, and it is just father and I in the room, I am exhausted. I fall back in my seat with a soundless sigh. Father smiles at me from his seat. Exhausting, isn't it? I nod. It is no wonder you are always so tired. The more meetings you attend, the easier it will become to participate in them. Father eyes the empty thrones in the room with a fond smile on his face. It is at times like this that I am most grateful for family. I look at him curious. He simply inclines his head. It is always easier to shoulder your burdens if you have loved ones there to pick you up. Before, I shunned others and refused to let myself be a part of the family. I did not think I ever needed to depend on anyone. Now, I realize that depending on others is not a weakness, but a strength. I allow myself to lean on my family, and on Fritz. Mm. I hope Fritz feels comfortable doing the same with me. Lucette. I look up at my father. How are things going between you and Lord Fitzgerald? They are fine. Why do you ask? Perhaps it is not my place to ask. But have you spoken with him recently about what he plans to do after his retirement paperwork is complete? Fritz hasn't mentioned anything to me, but I do not want Father to worry needlessly about our relationship. He has spoken about it some. Oh, I am glad. He seemed at a loss when I spoke to him the other day. Strange. I wonder why Fritz brought this up to Father and not to me. I have no doubt you'll help him figure something out. I stand abruptly. If I may, Father, do you mind if I excuse myself for a couple of hours? 
I have another meeting later, and I would like to enjoy my break while I still can. Of course. Thank you for your hard work, Lucette. Father offers a cordial nod as I leave the throne room. Okay, so we're not really relying on family so far anyway to help us with our problems at the moment. No sooner have I walked out into the corridor than a person steps in front of me, effectively blocking my path. Good afternoon, Lucette. <laughs> I stumble back in surprise. Fritz smiles apologetically. Sorry. I thought I'd wait out here for you. Where were you even hiding? Pillars. They're a great place if you want to catch scandals. Ask Myth. Hiding? I wasn't hiding. I was just standing right outside the door. How did I miss him? Fritz's eyes glimmer as he leans toward me. Are you free now? For a few hours. I am assuming you want to go somewhere. I always want to go somewhere with you, Lucette. But yes, if you have the time, I'd like to take you out to town today. There is something I'd like you to see. Then, by all means, please lead on. Prince takes my hand and begins to lead me down the corridor. Alright, what are you showing me? As we approach the gates, I recall what Father said in the throne room and pause, considering. He said that Fritz discussed something about the future with him, something he has not yet told me. Is there a reason he does not want to say anything to me? Lucette, is something on your mind? Um... Hmm. This boy and his secrets. I feel like this whole route is just like truly earning trust between these two. There's like there is trust there, but it's, like, tentative. And a lot of it's like, yeah, I trust you, or at least I would like to trust you. <laughs> and it's not really trust yet? Which is odd. I mean, I, I get it. These two are different people. Anyway. Uh, I'm... F uh, you know, he's got... He's excited. He's been waiting for her to to come out. He has a thing he wants to show her. This is probably not the time to bring up So I heard you talking to my dad behind my back. <laughs> Why don't you ever talk to me, boo? So let's just... Now's probably not the time. I hope. Oh no, I was just thinking about the meeting. There must be a reason Fritz has not said anything yet. I should leave it be for now. What was the topic today? Was it another meeting about the rising crime rates? More or less. What was the consensus? Most everyone suggested an increase in security. Many of the counselors suggested having the night's work extended hours. Fritz furrows his eyebrows, looking disgruntled. I vetoed the idea. If we wanted to make that work, we will have to increase the number of nights we send out, not the hours we make them work. No offense, but these rich men know nothing about how difficult a knight's job is. I am no knight, but I know how hard Fritz and Jurian work. They do not. Father agreed with me on the matter. He also insisted that Jurian be there to provide her own expert opinion. Like Father, like... He stops suddenly and shakes his head. He's like, oh, no wait, I don't want to be like my dad. Eh. Never mind. I'm sure His Majesty was glad to have you there to echo his opinions. Yes, but it took a while to convince the counselors. That's the reason the meeting went on for so long. Well, at least it's over now. He squeezes my hand and smiles as we head out toward the gates and into town. Alright. What have you got planned for me? 
Fritz takes me to the edge of the main plaza, where a large crowd is already gathered. I nod my head politely at the townsfolk who meet my gaze. What is happening here? Fritz smiles. You'll see. It's a surprise. He leads me to the front of the crowd. I direct my attention to the central object of attention. A large stand. Behind it stands a man I recognize. Walt? Yeah! There's my boy! Hello, everyone. My name is Walt, and today I'll be telling you all a story. I had no idea Walt had a show planned for today. How are you doing your shows without magic these days? Walt begins his show with the practiced ease of a longtime performer. Today, he has puppets and is sitting behind his stand and using them to act out a scene. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there lived a little witch. The little witch had a best friend who happened to be a human girl. The story goes on, with Walt playing both of the characters. It is a short about a witch who does magic for her friends every day. But then one day, magic disappears, and the little witch no longer has any magic with which to impress her friends. For some time, the little witch is ostracized. She feels alone and sad because she no longer possesses the thing she thought made her special. But at the end of the story, the little witch's friends return. The little witch's friends told her that even if she could no longer use magic, that didn't mean her magic was gone. She still had magic. One of the puppets points at the other. Magic that was in her heart. He smiles. And regardless of the magic that used to exist, we all have magic in our hearts. That is why, even today, the little witch and her friends can live happily ever after. Well done, Waltz. Such a legend. I'm surprised by the loud applause. The people liked the story? It is hard to believe after hearing what my captors said to me. They made it sound as if witches were being discriminated against. I turned to look at Fritz, who was applauding with everyone else. I thought you needed to see this. You're not the only one trying to pick up the pieces from two years ago, Lucette. You're not in this alone. Fritz. The applause dies away as some of the children rush forward to bombard Waltz with questions. Most people did not know Waltz was a witch until he publicly announced it two years ago. He did it, hoping it would help ease tensions between the humans and witches. Very brave of you, Waltz. Fritz leans over and grabs my hand. He pulls me away from the crowds into the outskirts of the plaza. Once we are safely outside of the area, he turns to me again, one hand on his hip. I was in town earlier when I heard about Sir Waltz's show. I knew that I had to bring you here. Thank you, Fritz. Even now, Fritz still thinks of me first. He is the most dedicated person I know. Eventually, the crowds begin to dissipate. Waltz, who is in the middle of taking down his stall, pauses when he notices Fritz and I. It is so nice to finally talk to another character. <laughs> there have been so many people that died that it's just like, been me and Fritz for forever, and a little bit of my family, and that's it. Princess, Sir Fitzgerald. He walks toward us with a bright smile. It is nice to see you again, Waltz. Waltz bows. And you too, Princess. Were you two here for the show? Fritz brought me here to see it. It was a good show with an... interesting topic. I heard about the kidnapping. Rumors spread fast in Angiel. I'm sorry, Princess. You do not need to apologize. Walt shakes his head. Oh! This is a new sprite pose. I'm a big fan of how he's anxiously tugging at his glove, by the by. You're bearing a guilt you don't deserve. What happened two years ago was Lady Parfait's decision, not yours. Thank you. Say it louder for the people in the back, Waltz. Thank you. 
Given the circumstances, it was the only thing that could be done. Exactly. All of us want to help where and when we can. Bridging the distance between humans and witches is the first step all of us can help with. I may not have my magic anymore, but that does not mean I've changed any. No, Waltz is still unflaggingly optimistic. Both Waltz and Fritz are smiling at me, and my poor heart just can't take all the good looks. When my eyes catch Fritz's, he takes my hand in his and gives it a gentle squeeze. He turns to look at Waltz. It was a great show, Sir Waltz. I was happy to see it. And I was glad that both of you could be here to see it. You ought to come to town more often. We will both try our hardest to do that. Waltz flashes us one last smile before returning to his booth and to the children crowded around it. It sounds as if they are asking him to play a game. <laughs> that boy. I turn to Fritz. We still have some time left. Do you want to take a stroll around town, or perhaps you would like to rest? Some part of me just really wants to speak to Fritz about what I heard earlier. I need to know that he is okay. Fritz is quiet for a few moments as he considers. In the end, he asks if I would be okay accompanying to his home for some tea. Now that might be a good time to bring up the subject matter. You know, you guys are alone, in private, he brought you to the thing that he wanted to show you, not catching unawares, might be a good time. I nod my approval and the two of us begin to make our way there. I sigh as Fritz sets the tray of tea down on the small table in front of us. <sighs> it is at times like this, when we are sharing tea in your home, that I wonder if you really are an old man stuck in a young man's body. Lucette, I'm offended. Despite his words, he still smiles as he plops down on the cushions beside me. And here I thought the tea would make conversation more pleasant. Fritz glances at me after taking a sip of his tea. You wanted to talk, yes. You always speak to me about your concerns, so it's only right that I tell you mine. Though if I'm being honest, my concerns seem a little petty by comparison. Petty? I eye him skeptically. I know you, and your problems are never petty, Fritz. So please, talk to me. You know you can tell me anything. Thank you, Lucette. Is that because I waited? Is that because I waited for the opportune moment? Maybe it would help to start at the beginning. Beginning? Have I ever told you why I decided to become a knight? No, you haven't. You were not forced into it, were you? I cannot help but think of the traitorous Alcaster, and of the enormous amount of pressure he always put on Fritz. I would not be surprised if Fritz had felt there was no choice but to follow in his father's footsteps. No, I wasn't. Fritz lowers his teacup and stares into it, his eyes filled with melancholy. Slowly, I slide toward him and lean my head on his shoulder. Ah, That's beautiful. Back when I was a child, there was nothing I loved more than listening to my father talk about the nights. Because he had such long days, I was usually stuck at home with the servants. They didn't interact with me much so I was usually lonely up until the moment my father returned home with his sword in hand. When he came back, he would tell me stories over dinner. He used to tell me tales of knights in shining armor, of men who protected the kingdom with their lives. He told me about the noble counselors and of Angiel's honorable king. The pictures he painted were filled with chivalry and heroism. For a few moments, Fritz is quiet, his eyes cloudy with memory. I loved him so much, and I was proud to be his son. That didn't change, even when we grew distant. I had always thought my father's dedication to putting the kingdom first was admirable. Later, when I decided I wanted to become a knight, my father trained me, even allowed me to use his own sword. The day he was made commander, we celebrated with the same tea. 
He draws away from me with a sigh. Suddenly, he looks stiff. I imagine this is where everything started to go wrong. <sighs> Back then, everyone thought of me as his shadow. They said I had no individual aspirations, that I may as well have been a copy of my father. I think I proved them right when I followed in my father's footsteps and joined the knights. But... He looks at me and smiles gently. I never let the cynicism get to me. When I learned that I was to become the princess's own personal knight, I didn't mind being compared to my father. All of my priorities shifted to you. I saw the way you closed people off, the way you were compared to your mother, and I... That's why you felt the bond with her, because you were being compared to your dad all the time. My heart. He sighs as he picks up his tea. <sighs> I understood, because mo my whole life, I too had been compared to my father. But you never lived in your father's shadow. You have always been your own person, Fritz. Maybe. But either way, the fact remains that for all those years, the only thing I believed myself capable of was being your knight. I was happy to focus on my duties because I had nothing outside of them. Fritz's shoulders sag. The truth is, Lucette, I'm terrified of what comes next. I am nothing without my sword and armor. Those people were right. I aspired to be like my father, and even when he was gone, I took up his mantle as commander without complaint. I followed his footsteps exactly, and now... Now that I have to give up my responsibilities, I have only you. This is what I've been wanting for years, but... He sinks even further into the cushions, his gaze forlorn. Now that I'm no longer your personal knight, I have nothing to offer you, Lucette. His voice is small and weak. I love you so much, but I am not good enough for you. I have no plans for my future. Nothing else that I can be beside your knight. What am I without my title? My whole life I have been trying to live up to others' expectations. First my father's, then the king's, and now yours. And I have never been good enough. I set my tea down so that I can look into his eyes. Fritz, that's not true. There is more to you than your past. You have the entire future ahead of you. You can be yourself without anyone ruling over your life. Fritz looks at me. The expression on his face is so gloomy it makes my heart sink. I was gonna say... It's like, yeah, I can be myself, but who am I? <laughs> Do I have a self? I've been following everyone else my entire life. Who am- who is Fritz the person? What are my aspirations? Do I have dreams? <sighs> Man, that's heavy. <laughs> Ugh. Yes, and that terrifies me. Because who even am I, Lucette? When I do not answer immediately, Fritz leans forward and grabs my hands. Do you know who I really am, Lucette? Do you know what sort of person I am beneath all of these expectations? I am a selfish fool. Fritz, I have known you for a long time. A longer time than most people. I squeeze his hands and look at him confidently, unperturbed. No matter what side of yourself you show me, and no matter what you decide to do with your life, I will always support you. I will always love you. For a long moment, the two of us just stare at each other. Fritz's expression is carefully blank, as if to conceal his emotions. May I ask you a question, then? You have to promise me to answer truthfully. I promise. 
He hesitates, but only for a few seconds. <laughs> hmm. The million dollar question. <laughs> Did you ever love Varg? What? The minute Fritz mentions the name, the present falls away from me. <laughs> oh, no! No, don't you dare do a flashback! <laughs> don't you dare! Don't you dare! Mm, no, 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 no. <laughs> my boy, my beautiful boy. Can't make something from nothing. Some part of your precious fruits became me, princess. There was already something dark and twisted in his soul. The curse just brought it to life. And now, here I am. I guess his emotions about you were too strong. It's rubbed off on me, and now I'm stuck caring about you too. Stupid. We both know who you'll choose when the time comes. Back then, I did not want Varg to exist. Because if he did, he would drive away Fritz. The small, dark part of Fritz would overwhelm everything else that he was. That is what scared me most about Varg. Lucette. I don't even know who I am now. <laughs> I'm thinking, okay. Like, Lucette's feelings on the matter haven't always been clear to me. I... Because I don't know how much I'm projecting my own feelings <laughs> onto Lucette. But I always did feel like she was fond of Varg. She was scared of him. But there was also a fondness there. And I think she appreciated his honesty with her. He never hid anything from her. Whereas Fritz often did to her frustration. Or wouldn't trust her right away. And throughout Evermore so far, there have been times where she gets the heart clench, like I do, about like, man, that smile, the way he's moving, that grin, it's so wolfish, it reminds me, and gets the sad look on her face. So I think if she's gonna keep her promise to answer truthfully, and if I'm gonna keep my promise to answer truthfully, I have to admit that I loved Varg. On that same trajectory, saying you- she just said that no matter what side Fritz shows to her, she will always love him and support him. And Varg is a side of Fritz that we got to see. And he's he's back in Fritz. He is a, still a side of Fritz. So if you don't say you loved Varg, then you don't really love Fritz. <laughs> because they are the same. It's all part of the same person. All right, here we go. <laughs> I thought about this way too long and felt way too many emotions, but here we go. I loved him. Fritz looks at me in surprise. But you always said... I put my fingers to his lips. 
I did not love Varg for himself, but because he was a part of you. Fritz stares at me, obviously puzzled. I remember when Mithras told me that Varg was slowly taking over your mind. I remember how terrified I was. Do you know why? Fritz says nothing, only looks at me mournfully. Because even though Varg was a part of you, I did not want him to take over your conscience. When Varg disappeared, I knew he would go back to you. But if you had disappeared, Fritz, Varg would have only ever been a distorted fraction of what you were. He was never meant to exist on his own. But still, Varg was a part of you, and I loved him for that. Fritz's expression crumples as he pulls away from me. Lucette. Though I know you are far more complex than just that single facade, I accept that part of you. That's why you asked, isn't it? Fritz smiles at me. It is half-hearted, but still better than his earlier hesitance. Alright, he appreciated our, our honesty. <laughs> Thank you, Lucet. He slides off of the couch and turns to face me. I apologize for going off on a tangent. I get the impression that the tangent has yet to be adequately explored. Oh, yes. Anyway, with that, you know a little bit more about my worries. I didn't plan on saying anything to you until I had come up with a more concrete plan, but... A concrete plan? Yes. A concrete plan for the future. I want to find something else I can be passionate about. Because outside of who and what I've been for the past so many years, I haven't had a lot of time to explore much else about myself. Fritz was always so busy with his duties. He has never prioritized his own hobbies. Come to think of it, what does Fritz do in his spare time? Could we not come up with a plan together? Together? Yes. Perhaps you should come up with a list, and we can check off items on the list when we are able to do them. I cannot help but smile at Fritz's confusion. You can list things you want to do or see, or things that you like. Then, whenever I have the time, I can help you do or see those things. You have more free time on your hands, don't you? If that is the case, then we can both find a new future for you together. In the deepest part of my heart, I cannot help but imagine Fritz sitting beside me on a throne. Yet I am realistic enough to know that this transition would not be easy. It takes two people to make that kind of momentous de de decision. Decision. <laughs> decision. Besides, Fritz is finally being given the chance to live the way he wants to. I do not want to take that freedom away by forcing him into yet another role. Perhaps if we spend more time together, that sort of future will become a reality one day. What do you think? Fritz smiles at me. After a few moments, he holds out his hand. I put my hand in his and smile when he kisses the back of it. I accept your offer, beautiful Lucet. Thank you. It is my pleasure. Oh, but before any of that, I point at his tea and raise my eyebrows. Finish your tea, Lord Fitzgerald, otherwise it will get cold. You know just as well as I that it's been cold for a while now. But if her royal highness commands it, then I shall obey. He plops back down on the couch and scoots closer to me, close enough to wrap an arm around my waist. He loves holding you around the waist. I spend the remainder of my free time at Fritz's side, wondering if there is anything I can do to help him beyond the assistance I have already offered. <laughs>